Society. On behalf of the Bombay Orthopedic Society, I welcome you to yet another edition of the Adapt and Evolve webinars. And today's webinar is a very pertinent one because it is about taking photography, it is intraoperative photography, clinical pictures, and pictures of X ray. Uh, the faculty today is a very renowned faculty. Uh, we have uh, Dr. Dhiren Ganjwala, who is a pediatric orthopedic surgeon from Ahmedabad. He is the current president of the Pediatric Orthopedic Society of India and the chairman of the leadership uh, committee or the Indian Academy of Cerebral Palsy. And we also have Dr. Shitik Chaudhary, who is a spine surgeon from the PD Hinduja Hospital, Mahim, Mumbai. So without any further ado, may I now uh, call upon the president of the Bombay Orthopedic Society, Dr. Sangeet Gawale, to kindly start the proceedings. Over to you, sir. Uh, that was Dr. Swapnil Keni, who is our, or, our secretary of Bombay Orthopedic Society. I am Sangeet Gawale, President, Bombay Orthopedic Society. So in this theme, Adapt and Evolve, we are choosing very common topics which are helpful to all our members. And one such topic is how to take a proper photograph of, of uh, the patient, of the X-ray, and at least... Uh, uh, if you convey the residents or the patient, they can send you proper x-rays or proper photographs on which you can make some judgment and give them an idea about what is required. Uh, not only that, even your uh, personal photographs, your family photographs, probably at the end of these two lectures, it will improve significantly. First part is how to take a photograph and second part is how to edit it. Even if the photograph is not taken properly, probably we can edit it to, uh, to a presentable one. And that is what exactly uh, Dr. Dhiren Ganjawala, who is uh, well versed with the topic and who have given several lectures apart from his specialty of pediatric orthopedics would be talking on. And the first speaker is Dr. Shitish Chaujari, who would be taking uh, the first part and how to take a photograph uh, whether it is of the patient or whether it is of your operative procedure. Uh, over to you, Shitish. Thank you very much, sir. Uh, I'm just going to start my presentation. Can you see the slides? Yes. Yeah. So, yes. Yeah. So my job for uh, the day is to tell you how to take good photographs uh, with your mobile phone. Uh, uh, and uh, as, as Sir said, this is a very important part uh, of documenting the patient's uh, uh, medical events as well as, uh, you know, the story, it helps you understand what has happened to the patient. And it's not necessary to show at conferences or uh, to do uh, good presentations or for publishing uh, papers, but it is a it is a it is a essential skill uh, to be acquired just for documenting um, the patient's story uh, as it happens because it is invaluable. The uh, importance of uh, such documentation um, has been uh, well documented throughout medical history. Uh, right from the uh, time of uh, the first anatomist from uh, uh, Dr. Uh, from Andreas Vesalius to Dr. Cushing, who was a very famous neurosurgeon. So uh, that uh, to begin with, uh, uh, I have a disclaimer. Uh, um, the presentation is focused only on iPhone photography. I have never used an Android phone in my life. I don't know why people use Android phones. But I hear they are as good as iPhones. Uh, so all the settings that I'm going to show you uh, hopefully will also be applicable to Android phones. And apart from that, um, I would like to acknowledge uh, two people, uh, Dr. Neeraj Bijlani, who was the past webmaster, who is also my neighbor. And I have taken a, a lot of slides uh, from his uh, talk and he has uh, presented this similar topic in the past. And the other person is uh, Dr. Pratik Patel, who is my fellow at uh, Hinduja. So with that, uh, let's start. So if you see the range of iPhones available, uh, even if you have a three or four year old uh, iPhone, 
uh, it still has an extremely good camera. Uh, the minimum megapixel from the for the uh, front, uh, sorry, the back camera is 12 megapixel. Um, and as such, I don't think you require anything more than six or seven megapixel uh, photograph uh, uh, for uh, for documenting uh, clinical photographs or uh, radiographic photographs. Uh, that would be also applicable if you want to publish this and print them in journal. So 12 uh, megapixel photographs are a kind of an overkill. Uh, the, the disadvantage of most of the camera phones is that it only gives you 2x optical zoom. Uh, it does not give you a lot of leeway in, in terms of uh, optical zoom. Uh, 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 the, the digital zoom can go higher, but digital zoom is not as good uh, and it degrades the quality of the photograph. So 2x is uh, the maximum, at least the iPhones, uh, the newest one, uh, as well as I have the uh, uh, iPhone 10, which also has a 2x. So what that, the disadvantage is that you have to get close enough to your uh, subject. You can't be very far off uh, and do a digital zoom uh, because the, the quality of the photograph degrades quite a bit. So you have to work around <coughs> With, with that disadvantage uh, for the mobile cameras. And really expensive cameras doesn't automatically translate into good photographs. Everybody knows that. And apart from being expensive, there are two main disadvantages of these cameras. The first is that they are not always there around with you. And even if you have these point and shoot cameras, you don't carry them around like you do your cellular phones. And the other disadvantage is that you need to know uh, quite a bit of these settings for these uh, 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 cameras. It's not just point and shoot always. Um, and uh, that's the reason why it uh, does not always translate into, into good photographs. But the main disadvantage is that's not always available. So I'm going to share with you 10 tips for taking good clinical photographs, which also includes intraoperative photographs as well as patient photographs and 10 tips for taking photographs of radiographic films. So before we start, I'll uh, tell you how to um, uh, modify a little bit of your settings on your phone. Uh, if you go to the settings uh, uh, in your iPhone and look up the camera settings, you want to make sure that your grid is on as well as smart HDR is on. By default, many times these are off. You want to switch them on. And I'll tell you what they are useful for. The smart HDR stands for high dynamic range. And what it does, it takes multiple photographs uh, and uh, uh, in, in very quick succession uh, in different exposures and merges these photographs into a single photograph so that dark areas are highlighted uh, and uh, brighter areas are toned down so that you get uh, a good uh, contrast uh, in, in the image. So uh, I would keep smart HDR on for all the photographs. And if you do, if you want to take a normal photograph as well, you can keep the third uh, to this, this last setting also as on, but every photograph will get saved twice if you do that. So I just leave the smart HDR only on and keep the normal photo off. And uh, if you look, uh, start the camera app, then you will notice that when you uh, open it, you will see these grid lines. And these grid lines tell you how your composition of your photograph is going to be. That's what happens if you switch on this grid. You want to make sure that the flash is off and your live photographs are off. You don't want these uh, settings for photographs. So by default, I keep these uh, uh, settings off. So with those settings, we'll go to the tips for clinical photographs first. Tip number one, make sure that your region of interest is in focus. And this is a very common mistake that people do. That is because uh, to focus uh, an image, although most cameras will autofocus, but the area is quite large. So for your subject, you need to touch the, the screen where the subject is. Uh, so when you touch the screen where this model uh, of the spine is, you will see that the exposure and the focus is changing. And if I touch it somewhere else in the background, in the, in the lighter area, it will focus in that region. If I, if I touch it somewhere else in, the, uh, in, in a more distant part, then your main subject will get out of focus. So touching the screen is important for two things. One is that it sets the focus and it also sets the exposure. So if your 
field of view has areas uh, which are bright and areas which are dark then uh, then it averages out sometimes the exposure but you want your exposure to be focused on your subject or where what object you want to show in your photograph so here the object is this 3d printed model so you click on the screen where that model is in your frame so that it focuses as well as the exposure setting uh, is adjusted you need to hold the phone very steady as i said when you switch on hdr it is going to take photographs in quick succession and if you shake your hand uh, the image is going to get blurred and it will appear as if uh, it is out of focus so the uh, the hold the phone steady by keeping your elbows uh, to your uh, side of your body that way your arm can be held more uh, steadily and instead of hitting the camera button here use the volume button uh, to uh, activate the shutter that way you don't have to let go of your camera that way the camera can be held steady so people many people don't know that the volume button can work as a as a shutter again also the third point is don't get too close to your uh, uh, region of interest that is because most mobile phones don't have the capability of taking macro shots you require a special lenses to do very close range photography uh, but that's not really applicable for us orthopedic surgeons or uh, spine surgeons uh, because our subjects are quite big it is more of a problem for dermatologists or somebody who is going to take a very close shot of some skin lesion or melanoma or something like that uh, i have not found that to be a problem most of the time in our photography but if there is somebody who is taking a photograph of say some phalangeal fracture which is very close close up then you won't be able to take your camera very close to the tip of the finger uh, to get a macro shot because it doesn't focus very well tip number 2 avoid distracting elements now you you have to think before uh, you shoot you, you like this photograph has uh, a bag here the dressing is uh, kept here uh, i don't know what we are showing in this photograph in this photograph this gauze piece is lying on the uh, Uh, on the uh, on the sterile drapes uh, in this scoliosis photograph the mother is standing here so these are not very uh, good photographs because they have these distracting uh, objects behind uh, your subject so always compose beforehand and think before you you shoot and remove all these uh, irrelevant objects that are not required it just takes uh, a second to do that if you don't think about it you will not do it and remember when you are taking photographs uh, undress the patient adequately obviously take permission and consent that is uh, uh, that, that is mandatory especially if you are taking photographs of uh, scoliosis uh, these are adolescent girls you have to make them comfortable uh, have a nurse or the mother stand by but uh, having a photograph done uh, like this with uh, uh, the patient uh, partially dressed is of no use at all you might as well not take the photograph so you need to be sure that you make the patient comfortable take permission and adequately expose the area that you want to show tip number 3 control your background so these photographs have a, have a background that is of varying in color uh, it also has some distracting elements behind it uh, you don't want something like this this is not a very good pro photograph mean you won't be able to use these Uh, without embarrassing yourself in any paper or any presentation so best is to use a uniform color background best is a white wall uh, or these um, hospital uh, curtains uh, which are maybe green or blue you can use sterile drapes uh, like these or those blue disposable sheets like that but have something very plain uh, as a background tip number 4 4 frame your image with a reference shot if you are taking a close up of a of a region you want to show the relationship of that close up with respect to the big picture where it is with respect to the whole spine so you want to take a picture of the whole spine and then take a focus picture of a close up of the area that you want to focus on so that that's a reference called a reference shot tip number 5 manage your lighting take an example of this photograph the you can see the light is focused here there are these distracting elements here you know this cotton wisp here so it is not a good photograph at all 
so the most important thing is switch off your flash if you switch on i mean anyway camera flashes are, are useless anyway but if you are using a professional photograph and you switch on the flash your whole photograph is going to get uh, pretty much white out um, and switch on hdr as i said uh, the high dynamic range helps you adjust exposures uh, quite well uh, and remember to adjust and play around with the overhead lights to get the best shot you can see in this photograph the light is shining somewhere here and the focus of the uh, in, uh, photograph is is quite in in the dark so um, um my personal preference is to leave the overhead lights on uh, and not remove them because if you remove the overhead lights and not use a flash the image is going to be extremely dark um and the best light to use uh, is a diffuse light fortunately in our operation theaters uh, you don't always get a diffuse light because the lights are shining right directly in the operative field uh, but you want to play around with the with the lights to get the best shot possible and do what works for you i i generally leave the lights on i don't remove them um and while taking clinical photographs uh, you probably have control over the light make sure uh, it is uh, in diffuse light like not directly like standing in sunlight or next to the window where you get uh, shadows and uh, uh, direct uh, bright lights uh, on the focused uh, region of interest tip number 6 avoid perspective distortion and what this means is that you want to show the problem end on like this first photograph has been taken by my fellow who has kept the camera at the patient's ear level when the patient's deformity is in the thoracic thoracolumbar area so if this patient's photograph was just taken with the camera at the level of the thoracolumbar junction the perfect profile of this uh, patient's deformity would have been visible if you if you position the camera at a higher level generally that's uh, what we do we get hold of our camera and which wherever our hands are we we take a photograph but remember that you want to keep your camera with respect to the subject and not with respect to where your hands are at that moment so if you see the photograph that i took in the operating theater uh, where the the camera was kept at the level of the thoracolumbar junction you see how the difference is uh, in in terms of this patient's uh, thoracolumbar kyphosis so take the images end on um the other thing is always think of the position of the camera when when you are trying to show some concept so if here i am trying to show a concept of translation um of the thoracic apex in scoliosis towards the rod so um, my view uh, for the camera has to be more tangential which shows that the rod is offset uh, is kept in the neutral uh, position in the normal anatomical position and i am going to drag all these screws to the rods so it 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 shows that concept of translation very well if you just keep the angle of the uh, camera at the right place um, so that you can convey the meaning of this photograph every photograph will have a meaning and that's why you need to think of how you will shoot it and from which angle tip number 7 provide a reference for the scale so if you are taking uh, specimens like these n block specimens of um, osteosarcoma and a uh, gct uh, you want to keep a reference scale to show how big this uh, uh, specimen is if you are doing discectomies and you are taking a photograph of the extruded disc fragment for example keep something like a scale that is always there on the operating table before taking a photograph tip number 8 uh, this is very obvious avoid patient identifiers and covid pandemic has taught us that this is quite easy to do if you just make the patient wear a mask and most patients these days are wearing masks so this shouldn't be a problem make sure that the mask is not on the patient's chin and it's on the nose and you won't have to uh, do anything further to this photograph to hide the patient's identity so that's a quick thing that we have started doing um uh, since the pandemic tip number 9 use cling wrap and take your phone on the table so this i have recently started doing i learned this from 
Dr. Vivek Shetty, uh, who is a consultant orthopedic uh, surgeon at uh, Hinduja. And um, this is uh, a cling wrap that uh, is about 50 rupees and it's made by Surgiwear. And uh, this allows you to take, uh, wrap it in a sterile uh, 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 wrap and allows you to take the camera uh, on, on the field or your assistant to take the uh, camera on the field. And this is the way I do it. So you keep the camera on the cling wrap and then just uh, wrap it up. Um, and, I, I'm, and I'm pretty confident that this is, this is very, very sterile. Uh, but uh, if anybody has concerns uh, for the sterility of this, please don't do it. Uh, I haven't had a problem with this uh, uh, and I use it quite regularly. And just to show you an example, this is the video that we shot recently, uh, which my assistant shot while I was putting a pedicle screw using my iPhone wrapped in cling wrap. And you can see the quality of this, uh, of this video. Mind you, uh, the iPhone camera can shoot at 4K. This is shot at uh, 100, uh, uh, 180p, but you can increase that uh, resolution and make it 4K in 60 frames per second, or I think it allows even more frames per second. It will get even more clearer, but, but the video gets pretty large, but you can see the quality of, uh, uh, of the video. And the important thing is, is, is to teach your fellow to keep, your, keep his hands steady. Uh, otherwise the whole thing shakes quite a bit, but uh, I was really surprised by the quality of uh, uh, the videos which we take using uh, iPhones wrapped in cling. Tip number 10, uh, lastly, annotate your image wherever possible. Uh, annotate your image uh, at the time or a, a, a day or two after your surgery because later on you are going to forget and many of the complex surgeries which require documenting it's really hard later to find out what the structures are. So this was a big multi-level VCR that we done did a few months ago. And when after we took the photographs, I have kind of uh, used my Apple Pencil and marked out all the um, uh, anatomical regions of, of this uh, side of the kyphosis. It's the same patient which I showed you uh, before, uh, showing the nerve roots, where the pedicles are, which is the Y disc and which one is the T8 vertebra, which one is the L1 vertebra. So this, this, this marking helps, uh, uh, you, uh, uh, this marking is really, really useful. You don't have to destroy the original image. You can always keep a copy of it. Now coming to the radiographic films, 10 tips for taking good pictures of films. First tip is don't use films. As far as possible, uh, if you can avoid it, Try not to capture your radiographic images from films. Directly use screen sh screenshots from your hospital packs wherever possible. Uh, unfortunately, many patients would come with images that are done outside the hospital and are not available on, on your packs. For those, you will have to take photographs of radiographic films. But whichever photographs you are done in, whichever x-rays are done in your hospital, try to take screenshots or save them directly as DICOM or JPEG images from your packs. That's the best quality image that you are going to get. And, and save two versions. If you are going to do uh, measurements on it, save one version without the measurements and save another version with the measurements. Because if you have made an error with the measurements and have taken a photograph, you will be stuck with that error always seen uh, on your image. Second, don't take images uh, or pictures of the computer screen. So if you have the image displayed on your hospital packs, uh, your uh, picture of the computer screen is just going to be extremely terrible. Might as well take photograph of the radiographic film on the view box. Tip number two, if you are taking pictures on the view box, you need a dark room. Not absolutely dark, but you need to switch off all the shiny lights at, at the back. Uh, if you don't do that, then you are going to get tube lights and shadows uh, reflected on your x-ray. Uh, like this, uh, you can see not only the tube light, but my hand being reflected uh, in, a, a, on, the, uh, on the MRI. And they, they, there is no Photoshop. I mean, there is Photoshop that you can remove all these, but your image will be a doctored image. And uh, if you are using these uh, images for publications, 
uh, there are algorithms uh, that can identify doctored images. So be careful in modifying uh, images uh, like this. So you cannot uh, remove blemishes and change the image so much that it changes the content of that picture. You probably can change the brightness and contrast to make it more clearer, but you can't remove objects from the image, which you can really with Photoshop, but scientifically, if you are trying to show it in any publications or something and you get caught, uh, that would be a terrible thing to happen. So tip number three, switch off the flash, obviously, uh, because this flash is going to show on the uh, X-ray film. Tip number four, get a close up. You cannot have uh, the, the wide of the view box uh, uh, in, your, uh, in your viewfinder because remember that your camera is going to set the exposure depending on the bright area uh, in, in, uh, that is falling, bright light that is falling on the lens. So you want to get as close uh, enough to the uh, X-ray film as possible. Uh, this not only, if, once, if you are very far, it not only spoils the exposure of the uh, X-ray, but it, it also uh, reduces the resolution of that photograph because you're going to crop it and come closer and you're going to get uh, a lower resolution image compared to if you would have taken a focus shot. Tip number five, uh, take photographs with the correct exposure. Again, the same principle applies. Uh, X-rays have uh, actually uh, areas of dark areas as well as bright areas. So you want to focus uh, uh, your exposure on your region of interest. And for this first example, um, if uh, the, the person who has taken this photograph has not touched the screen of your of the phone where the implants are and that's why it's looking very white out if if the person would have uh, touched the screen there automatically the phone would have adjusted the exposure um, and ha would you would have had a clearer picture uh, of of the spine so always remember get the exposure right by touching the screen of of the phone and again if you're too far off uh, it is going to uh, uh, Take the expo set the exposure automatically depending how much white area you have left around your x-ray. Tip number six, take a picture before annotating x-rays uh, to preserve what the original quality is. Uh, and obviously you can always keep two copies because these are digital copies. Like for this e example, this is a congenital basilar invagination and you don't want to mark the x-ray and then take a photograph because if you have made an error, uh, you are stuck with only one photograph. Uh, and this actually happened in one of our publications recently. Uh, we, I had taken a photograph of a patient about 10, 12 years ago. Um, and uh, there was some marking that was wrong. And the reviewer actually picked that up. And he, he and that person asked us what this line meant. And we had to actually accept that this line is, uh, is wrong. Uh, and we don't have the original x-ray. So we are stuck with this uh, picture and we had to kind of a put some explanation about that line. So um, uh, before annotating, uh, always remember to take a clean uh, uh, X-ray uh, picture uh, before modifying it. Tip number seven, avoid parallax. And here is the grid that will help you. If you take X-rays obliquely, uh, take photographs obliquely, you will see at the edge of the photograph, your X-ray film does not line up. So uh, your images can appear uh, quite skewed and if you ever later want to do measurements on uh, on these x-rays especially angle measurements uh, if you have a parallax then your angle measurements are going to be wrong um, so that's tip number six tip number seven crop out unnecessary parts so before saving the image make sure that you have cropped out all the parts that are not necessary but my preference is to not crop out the date because it, it is one thing that tells you the chronology of the uh, events or the x-rays uh, that you are saving in the patient's folder. So I never crop out the date and most of the time I never crop out any important information like this x-ray is taken in extension. You don't want to crop that out because if, if you do that, then you wouldn't know whether this x-ray, what position it was taken in. So you want to crop out the unnecessary parts, but you don't want to crop out the main uh, uh, date as uh, or whether the x-ray is taken in standing position or taken in traction or things like that. 
Tip number eight: Always desaturate your X-rays and MRI films. Whenever you take um, your uh, photographs on your phone, they are going to have a bluish tinge to it. Unless you take photographs directly as black and white be before taking clicking the picture. But if you are not doing that, then it is going to have a bluish tinge to it. So always remember to desaturate your image. And I have seen endlessly so many publications having pictures that have bluish green tinge. when they are publishing it looks unprofessional and the picture is not uh, is not very great or clear looking so how you desaturate uh, you go on your uh, photo gallery click on edit and when you click on edit you will see this um, effects section and in effects section you can take uh, choose the mono or these last three effects and automatically this x ray becomes a black and white x ray you can do it on your keynote presentation or powerpoint presentation as well but it's to best to save the original image uh, as a black and white image rather than a uh, than a tinted one tip number 9 take one film at a time so uh, if you have a very large view box doesn't mean that you will put up multiple films and take one photograph uh, you reduce the in, uh, resolution of these photo uh, of these photographs as well as add a lot of extra work later on because you'll have to duplicate and crop and you know get them in sequence so take photographs one at a time uh, tip number 10 uh, take photographs that are focused on the pathology uh, like especially in spine i see a lot of people especially uh, fellows and residents who don't understand what what we have to take a picture on uh, taking pictures of the entire uh, mri film and not taking a close up of the pathology uh and this is very important because um, many times uh, in such uh, photographs you can't see details if you are taking a very large uh, mri film in in one shot so uh, always document the um uh, individual pathologies and uh, focus and this is a similar as the reference shot that you would do for uh, clinical photographs as well and the last and the extra tip is to train your fellows and residents because you can't take all your photographs uh, this is the most important thing and if you want a good documentation of uh, what uh, uh, your collection of uh, data will be over 10 years or 20 years make sure that your fellows and residents uh, also learn the correct way of doing it thank you very much so that was excellent chitij uh, any questions or any tips uh, dhiren sir like uh, some of the tips uh, which uh, kshitij said i am also going to uh, discuss like how we can rectify those issues so what he mentioned about the perspective and the desaturation we are also going to see in the photo editing part also kshitij i just had a query you said that uh, why people use android phones uh, trust me many of them Have a fantastic resolution as regards uh, clicking pictures. That was uh, one true, thing. True. And second is, can you just highlight this annotation part? You know, which you've said because somebody on the group has also asked, uh, how do you annotate? So if you can just touch upon that briefly. Yeah. So um, uh, the first part, uh, I'm sure Android phones are good. Uh, I have no doubt about it. um and sometimes uh, some of them are better than the iphone cameras uh, but uh, i have never owned an android phone so i'm kind of uh, trapped in the ecosystem uh, of apple uh, and uh, uh, and i am happy to be trapped actually because uh, a lot of things that you can do on an iphone you can't do it on android uh, or on your macbook for that matter so there are many many things uh, that are in my workflow and the keyword here is workflow how are you going to go from your photograph to your publication and what are the apps or the applications or what is your workflow to get there and that workflow for me is completely in an apple ecosystem um and that's the reason and, and i find it uh, and whenever somebody has tried to show me on android i find it you know uh, surprising that why why people don't find uh, the iphones um, easier to use but apart from that the second question but we can i am an apple fanboy everybody knows that so 
but uh, i will show you about the annotating part of it uh, by sharing the screen so i use ipad again uh, the ipad helps uh, uh, me to use an apple pencil so I, i many times will take photographs and drag them into this app called uh, uh, good notes and what the good notes app does is that it allows me to write things uh, and this is for myself really this was a really complicated surgery that we did uh, recently but uh, i just want to document what happened and how it happened so these are the photographs and i have written down these are polyaxials these are reduction screws and how the lateral wall is and gen generally the steps of the procedure and you know all, all and i've done this using apple pencil this is the fastest way of doing it um, and uh, i i find this extremely good to document your uh, your surgery uh, i and many times i have used these direct images for publications with my handwriting and the arrows and things like that it really does not matter because it makes the picture so clear not like this obviously but this is something that i'll write my notes on like uh, i do that quite frequently for most most of the at least the complicated surgeries so there is a uh, two things one is that uh, agnivesh wants to add something about uh, choosing the camera for intra op photography and then there are two questions one is uh, somebody asking whether the ot light should be switched on and off on or off while taking a intra operative photograph and the second question is that when you are shooting an x ray many a times the clips of the viewing box come in come in the way so if there are any tips or tricks for that so maybe agnivesh can start and then all the faculty can give us some tips and tricks on both these questions thank you swapnil sir uh, so as uh, shitit sir said i am also apple fan boy but i use android also and uh, for some reason i have found android cameras to be slightly better as compared to that same age uh, iphone cameras but it matters how you click the photograph Hello. so the point which i wanted to highlight is that there is something called as an f stop value in an camera so whenever if you if you are if somebody is interested in photography he will know what f stop value is so it is the uh, f value so you if you have a choice choosing between a 12 megapixel camera of a versus a 12 megapixel camera of b you choose the one which has got a lower f stop value i'll tell you why so the lower f stop value means the aperture of the shutter is can open much much more to accommodate more light as compared to a lower f stop value so what happens is your exposure time becomes less and even in slightly less light or in a dim light you will be able to get a better uh photograph without compromising the light and the quality so that f stop value is something you should look at the cameras nowadays these three cameras are coming like this only one is a regular camera one is a telephoto camera which is a distant and third is a macro or a lower f stop value camera which helps in low light shooting so that is the fun of having three cameras in nowadays phone but for a single camera if you choose a lower f stop value it will be better and uh, the question about uh, ot lights and uh, uh, viewing box clips can i answer about that viewing box uh, it's yeah. a simple thing like when you shoot the pictures uh, see normally what happens when you take a if it is of a lower limb say it is a scanogram and uh, it is the image is from end from the hip joint to the foot and your clips uh will probably come over the femoral heads so what you do is you just turn the films and take a shoot so that way you can crop it and use it in a better way and second thing is uh shitej what i have found is i also use a iphone so without the ot lights uh the pictures come as good as good or probably better without the ot lights but the same is not true when you are doing a video recording or through a iphone for that you need uh, you know like not a full glaze but you can reduce the intensity of the light or you can keep only one light focused on your operative field the problem of switching off the ot lights especially for our kind of surgeries are that uh, the areas uh, 
some areas are dark so um, many times if you are taking like big big regions uh, then the areas are quite dark so the all the videos so the video that i showed you of the iphone is not only with a overlight overhead light on but i have a 100000 lux headlight on my head showing that pedicle screw entry point so that area is as bright as a microscope light so the the video where i showed how to insert the pedicle screw not only has the overhead lights but i have a design for vision headlight that is 1 lakh lux that that will beat any overhead light in any operation theater so it's that bright so it depends on how your camera's iso iso is the sensitivity of the sensor responds to that bright light you know and it also depends on how you frame your image if you are taking a very far off shot it's not going to appear well you need to frame not only frame your shot well but also have touch the screen so that it it adjust the exposure to that brightness um so i i always take overhead lights uh, on but you know if you are getting good photographs with, with the lights off no problem viren sir your take on that um yeah so the first question was about the uh, the clips which we see while taking the x ray picture what i suggest is like if you really want to take the end of the x ray film in your view then i would suggest to use micro pore and uh, use that to uh, like stuck uh, stick the x ray to the view box because then you can take the end part very clearly the second uh, the crop function which is already there which we are going to see in the photo editing tool can be also used in that so these are the two ways one very important question which was asked and very uh, relevant and i i don't have the answer so i would like to ask sitish for that uh when you are taking the x ray from the uh, iitv uh right the tv we see the horizontal lines correct so yes, how yeah. to overcome that problem because some cameras are really good and they remove the lights the uh, lines correct but correct. some cameras are not really good to remove the lines yeah. so what is the so, solution so that depends on the shutter speed so your the cam the the uh the cms uh, uh, screen is flickering obviously there is a frame rate to it 30 hertz or 60 hertz or some frame rate is there to that screen and plus you have a shutter speed on your uh, on your camera so uh, the way to get around it is to adjust the shutter speed of your iphone camera so you can adjust the shutter speed using apps some of the apps are free some of them are paid but you can you can have full manual control on the iphone uh, camera as well as android cameras you can change the f stop what uh, agnivesh was saying you can change the f stop you can change the shutter speed you can prolong the uh, exposure you can change the iso settings uh, individually you can change all these things to get photographs but most of the time for that flickering issue if you just change the shutter speed it and just manipulate it you will get a good photograph uh, if i recollect dr jawar jethwa has given a tip on this uh, if he is if he has logged in or if or if he can hear us probably he can unmute and answer yeah he is here jawar bhai yes 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 uh, am i audible yes sir yeah i like this two three very good tips like you know making it uh, sterile and all the tips are good one thing is that when when um, uh you have this problem of strips which are coming use the old mobile all new mobile are so sensitive that you won't be able to take out the strips and there are third party whole camera app which are available which you have to you have to install in your camera i mean your mobile but there are so many different um, parameters to check in but i would say to avoid this permanently best part is that you you try to uh, use led uh, monitors stop all those tube monitors 
LED will not give you this trouble. And that is a, a very important. Second part is, as far as the shaking is concerned, if you go a little far and take 2K, 4K high resolution video or photo, then shaking will be less. More closer, the shaking will be more. So your handshake can also be checked. And third part is that when there is a low light, as such, if you have 2000 to 5000 lux light in the room, operation theater room, it is enough to take good photographs. Yes, for the video require more light. But for the photograph, it is good because it is a absolutely homogeneous sort of a light and you can switch off the operating light. But for, for you know, uh, to, to make the part which is more uh, important, you have to have a small iris so that you can get a better focus. So fundamentally, there should be good light where you want to take a photograph. If the good light is not there, then fundamentally it is not the, not the situation where you are going to get more focus. So more focus is only possible when the room light is very good and you are able to you know, pick up. Third part is when you are having a trouble, like you're not able to get a good contrast of the X-ray film where the view box is accommodating two films. You have put only one film, then the other side is giving you light. So best way is to keep some which are not important, but keep some extra there also. At least that will block the light and Iris would be automatically adjusted. I mean, the, the brightness will be automatically adjusted to the photo uh, X-ray you are interested in. So that is a very simple and good way. And for the clips of this view box, you, we have a view box without clips. So change it. Every time we don't have a time to crop and do all these things. So th I think that should, be, that should be very easy. But regarding the strips, I use even the older one, which are having a, as very rightly uh, Kshitij has said, that the hertz which are giving us a trouble. So all the new cameras are so sensitive, it picks up. And secondly, sometimes it is the tube light inside the operation theater. That tube light flickers over this particular screen and that also gives you a reflection. So you have to find out and switch off all this or you change it them to LED light. LED will not give you trouble. Thank you. Thank you. That was excellent, sir. Uh, Sapnil, can we move on to Dr. Dhiren's uh, sir's lecture? Yes. And we can take the remaining questions at the end. Yeah. Thank you. Just I'm going on the full screen mode. Right. So basically, Akshitij very rightly uh, suggested a wonderful tips about how to take a proper pictures. In spite of that, the best efforts, sometimes we get a, a photo which is not as we want and we need to use some of the editing tools. So basically, I'm first of all, I should like to have a disclaimer that I am not gaining any financial gain by suggesting any app from this. So whether it's iPhone, whether it's Android, whatever name I suggest in this lecture is basically my personal preference and it has nothing to do with uh, any financial gain. So I'm going to discuss three points. The first point which we are going to discuss is like, why do we really need such photo editing? So that's the first question I'm going to discuss in this presentation. The second is the common features we as an orthopedic surgeon use in our practice. So that I'm going to uh, discuss. And I'm going to show you some of the actual uh, features and how to use it. So these are the three important points which we are going to learn in this lecture. So taking the first point, why do we need photo editing? Basically, there are two use of any photos which we take in our life. For first, we use it for a presentation or as Kshitit said, we use it for a publication. So we call it a medical use of the photo. Nowadays, which is becoming very common and very popular, that is use of photographs on a social media. So these are the two use. I'm going to focus on the first use, which is a medical use 
of uh, pictures which we take either for the presentation in the some lectures in some conference or use it for a publication so let's see the some of the indications like this picture of a surgeon who is like uh, carrying out a surgery you can see that this picture is not proper it's a dark picture and when we want to show this picture we need to use some photo editing tool so we are going to see how to improve this picture the second use is like what shikit said is like whenever you take a picture particularly from the view box most of the view box have a light which is having a bluish tint and this picture is also showing a bluish tint so how to remove that that we will see the third thing what shitit said is about the parallax removal or i call it a perspective now this x ray you can see that this x ray is not having a proper rectangle image you see a white border around that and again this cannot be solved easily by crop tool this is a perspective problem and how to solve it that also we will see the best way is to avoid while taking a picture but sometimes you have taken a picture and you have realized at the after taking the picture that this is not exactly i have taken perpendicular to the view box so we need to remove this uh, parallax error in the editing um, software the fourth use is like when we have a picture like this there is a yellow color ball which is distracting the whole picture whenever we see that yellow color is attracting our attention and we need to remove that so that our attention comes directly on the speaker so we need to use some photo editing tool like a crop tool to take out that unnecessary part of the picture sometimes we have a picture where there is a background and this background is really distracting because there are so many things and instead of having our attention or a focus on the person our attention goes what is there on the back side it's human mind to focus what is there on the back side or in the background and to avoid that we need to remove the background and how to remove that also we will discuss so let us uh, see the common features which we use in our practice i have selected only few but there are a lot of features we can use and we can have some interaction after the lecture also so the most common feature we need to use is correction of the brightness particularly when we take pictures the light is not correct and what shitit said about like having a focus on the most important part if that is not done the brightness will be either more or less so both brightness and contrast they need correction so we will see how to do that the second uh, we need to adjust the colors also so that what x ray we saw of uh, like bluish tint how to desaturate it or how to make it gray scale that we will see the third we will see about how to use a crop tool we will also see how to or why uh, we need to remove perspective we will actually not be able to show it how to remove perspective because it's a bit lengthy process but i will try to give you some tips on that and the last which ideally we should not use in our medical photography particularly for the publication but sometimes there is a lot of distraction on the background and we need to remove those background so that the focus remains on the area of interest some of the less commonly used features are the college where we try to combine uh, more than one pictures in a group or sometimes uh, what we understood was about annotating uh, the same thing i have used the text editing because there are few questions on text editing like how to do it i will show you how we can do it uh, on the powerpoint so let's start with the first thing uh, about how to change the brightness so to show you that this is a picture which i showed that's not the correct brightness the correct brightness 
and the contrast is like that. So let's see how to do it. And for that, I am going to actually show you. So for that, I will come out of the full screen and then I will take you to the next slide. And I will try to change. See, these are the two pictures which are slightly darker. So I will select this picture on the right. Then to change it, I will go to the picture format. Then I will go to the correction part, which is second. And then there are different options available. And as you take it on the ready-made options available, this picture has a brightness of 40% more and contrast is 40% minus. So these are the ready-made. So like this is one option. If you go on the second, there is a brightness of 20% and contrast minus 20. Here, if you go, then the brightness is zero and the contrast is minus 40. So there are various options and which, whichever options you feel appropriate, you can select. So like if I select this over here, now you can see that if I go to the full screen, now you can see that the picture is corrected. This is the easiest way to do it in PowerPoint. Let's come to the second feature which we need to use and that is this X-ray with a bluish tint. And if you want to remove it, and if you really want to make it grayscale, this really looks nice. It can be taken care of at the time of taking a picture, but you have already taken a picture. And if you want to correct it, then let's see how to do it. And for that, again, I will show you how we can do it. So select on this picture, go to the format picture tool, and then we go to the color part. And here we have our options, the recolor the picture. And in that, the second option is a grayscale. So I use this one. And now you can see that there is a desaturated picture ready. And you can see it and then you can see the difference between the two. So the best part is like to avoid this error, but if this error is taken place, then definitely you can use this recoloring picture. The same problem occurs many a times when you take a picture and when there is a lot of blood, the image looks very red. And you can use this recolor options to reduce the intensity of red color in the picture. Coming to the crop tool, the crop tool is very easy to use. Um, so let's start with this picture. If uh, there is a yellow color ball which is distracting and which is taking our attention, in that case, we just simply take out that part by a crop tool. It's very easy to use and I'm sure most of you have used it. I will show you some advanced feature of cropping so that uh, you can understand that. And once you understand the advanced feature, you can use the simple crop tool very easily. Sometimes when we really want to show the emotions of a person, very rarely we need to show it in the medical presentation, but for some other presentation, if you really want to show the emotions, then it's always better to have a focus or use a crop tool and then magnify the picture to the full screen so that whatever emotions you want to convey, you can convey it well. Some tips for effective cropping. Like this is a picture with a girl who is having a sternocleidomastoid contracture and having a torticollis. Now, we have taken a three pictures. The one with a straight face, the second with a rotation on the right side, and the second on a rotation with the left. Now, if you look at when you want to show all the three pictures, they should be cropped in a manner so that the level is at the same thing. So this is okay, but if you can do it like this, where you can see that the all three pictures are aligned properly, and that can be done very easily by using crop tool. The most important thing which I must accept that while preparing this presentation, I realized that if I want to crop my picture like this, I, I want to uh, use this picture or send this picture for preparing the flyer. 
previously i used to crop it like this that i used to like crop around my face what i learn during uh, preparing this presentation and it is like you need to crop in such a way that your eye level is at the junction of upper third so if you take it like uh, divide the picture into three part your eyes should be below the upper third so if you look at uh, this picture looks more natural than the previous one so instead of that if you crop in this way so that your eyes level are just below the upper one third level then this picture is more pleasing it looks or it gives more better impression to the other person the lot of people have a tendency to crop to focus on the area which is area of interest like if i show you a photo, uh, picture of this dog you will be really surprised like what i want to convey but if i show you exactly like this that the dog is trying to play with a ball or is trying to catch the ball then it gives you the correct idea so it's always better to keep some other feature in the photo so that you get the idea about the emotions of that particular person if that's applicable this is not applicable in every picture but if it is applicable then we have to keep this in mind coming to the crop according to the shape so for that purpose i will show you like this is a picture and we can in a powerpoint we can crop it in this way and how to do that i will show you how we can do that if you learn how to crop in a shape then i am sure that uh, with a simple feature of a crop tool you can always do it so let's see that in this picture so again i will go out of the full screen i will select this picture go to the picture format i use a crop function in that there is a arrow the down arrow so this is a standard crop tool in which i can remove or like make a picture like this so this is a standard crop tool we don't want to discuss that we want to discuss a slightly advanced feature in which we want to crop it according to the shape and for that we go to this picture crop tool and we go crop to the shape powerpoint has given a lot of ready made shape in which we can crop so let's select a shape of the heart like this and now i can crop the picture in the heart shape again i go to the crop tool and now i can show it like i can crop it like this so this is cropping according to the shape and if you see over here there are various tools various shapes ready made shapes available in the powerpoint i am sure that keynote also have a similar function but i am more familiar with powerpoint so i am showing uh, the powerpoint features so there are various shapes the triangle rectangle trapezoid so all these shapes can be used depending on your requirement okay next point which shitish uh, mentioned about the perspective uh, first of all i will like to show you what is the problem of perspective this is a building uh, a multi story building now if you look at the right and the left edge of the building these borders are parallel however when you take a picture away from the building where your camera is slightly tilted you get a picture like this or sometimes like this and this does not convey the proper perspective if you look at the two lines the two edge of the building they are not parallel again these lines are not parallel so there is a problem of perspective and this problem is very common in orthopedics particularly when you try to take a picture of x ray when it is on a view box ideally you should try to remove it while taking the picture 
but if you have taken picture without paying attention then you really need to remove this perspective error so a lot of people what they do it they try to remove this white edge white border by just using the crop tool like this now the person if you are smart you can still find out the problem with perspective because the line which is dividing the two pictures which is not perpendicular but this line is oblique so that says that yes you have removed the white border but still the picture is not perfect the correct perspective removed picture is like that where there is no white border and at the same time the central white line is perpendicular to the pictures so now the question is how to change perspective unfortunately powerpoint does not have a feature by which we can remove the perspective so i suggest you that if you are using a computer it's better to use a application which is free available online called pixlr and in that if you go there is a option available distort picture and by which you can correct the picture from all the angles so that's a wonderful tool very easy to learn if you are using mobile then one app which is called snapseed has again a feature to correct this perspective so for a computer i would suggest you to use online application and for mobile the snapseed is one application which is very easy to use and which can take care of the perspective once again i would like to say that these are not the only apps or the software there are lot many other options available but i have used this feature this apps and i i found it very easy that's why i am recommending this apps something interesting is like background removal tool or what we call it a chroma effect a lot of time you see that uh, on a uh, you go to a uh, the tv channels for some interview and then they take a into your interview or they record your interview with a green background and when actually you show your live tv or like your your uh, actual video on a tv channel when it's released the background is completely changed so that effect is known as a chroma effect particularly for a video but for a photo it's called the background removal tool so let's see that this is a picture a photo and you find that this background is not really good so you can definitely remove that in a powerpoint by a tool which is called a background removal i am not for the lack of time i am not going to take you into how to do it but if time permits at the end i will definitely uh, do it but how effective this tool is or the application is like this is a picture by background removal tool the background has been completely removed now you can substitute a background and you can add greeneries you can add fountain or you can add fall on the background or you can show it like she is at a beach so this is very easy to use tool and you can remove the background and you can use it once again this is not for medical photography because as shiti said that this is not permitted for the publications but for a social media it's a very powerful tool i'm going to give you something more or show you something more advanced feature in which we are using both background removal and the color change so this is the original picture and we can change the color of a dress and we can make it like this so how we do it so this is a original picture we will use a background removal tool so we remove everything except the dress so this is what we have done with a background removal tool then as we saw we go to the format picture and we use the color option recolor option and we recolor it to a green dress and this is the basic layer of the picture 
on which we take this green color ground or the gown and we apply it over there and that actually changes the original photograph so all this is possible with powerpoint actually which software do we need i would give you a simple tips that if you are using a presentation in that case you can use on a powerpoint and if you want to use it for a social media there are a lot of options available to us so for presentation as i said the powerpoint is a wonderful tool sometimes you need pixlr for changing the perspective for social media it again depends whether you are using android phone or a iphone for android phone these are the options available when we have a multiple options we get confused and we need to or i need to suggest you which app is best but before i answer uh, uh, again these are the apps available for the iphones so which apps to select a lot of people they use a free app again in a free app the ads are a nuisance so we want to avoid app which is not having apps uh, sorry advertisement again it depends on the features which we want to use and how easy to learn this app so considering that i would like to suggest for android phone the snapseed which is probably at present considered to be the best app and the adobe lightroom which is another app which is free and easy to use and easy to learn so at the end i would like to say something about the important things that photo editing is a fun it's really give you a lot of satisfaction by making your picture perfect but this requires a lot of practice it's time consuming and only if you are perfectionist and really want to give best presentation you will not be like uh, to spend so much time after that again you learn by trial and error so if you are a novice in that please be patient try it for few times and as you try gradually you will become expert so the message of the bombay orthopedic society adapt and evolve that is rightly applic applicable to the photo editing so if you really want to be a master try it and actually i i assure you that with time you will evolve and you will become a master if you need any help then definitely you can email me or you can whatsapp me i will be very happy to answer your questions and will be very willing to help you out so that you really don't need to spend so much of time thank you that was excellent thank you sir any question I, comments yeah there are, there is a question coming in uh document scanners like adobe or microsoft lens can help in correcting perspective uh <laughs> parallax what is your opinion sir on that Pratik yeah, fine. Like, say, we can use any tool. It's 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 available now. There are multiple options, so we can use any app or any online uh, software for that. But what I suggest is like try to remove parallax because like when you see a picture with a uh, oblique white uh, background, that is not appealing and that really tells that you are not perfectionist. So try to remove par parallax or. um correct the perspective that is what my message is uh there is a question which i have sir i just wanted to ask you how do you store your photographs we've done a session on storage but this this is a personal question because you've been practicing for more than maybe 25 30 years so how do you store your pictures in what format and uh, in what form okay so the first of all like say i try to take uh, pictures in the maximum resolution so the problem is like when you take it in a like the best resolution the picture size or the file size will be too great and that will occupy too much of space so as soon as like every week or every 15 days when i get time i try to shift all my pictures 
from camera, whether it's a mobile camera or from the SLR, I shift it to the computer. And then I, I try to edit my picture at that particular stage so that whatever unnecessary things are there, whatever cropping I want to do, I crop it and then I save it in a compressed format so that it takes less file size. So these are the tips I would like to use it. Because if you go on storing picture without uh, compressing, then it would really consume a lot of your space of the hard disk. And that will be very difficult to have enough space after a few years. Yes, Javarbe, any comments on that? Yeah, so very, very good, very well uh, explained. Uh, I think uh, majority part has been covered. One part is regarding the cropping into a particular shape to give some attention to aspect ratio. So if you put one gem one, you will get a pure square or pure round. If you keep three by four, then you get that sort of a uh, dimensions. It is very important because sometimes we have some, you know, not an exit square or not an exit oblong or whatever way. Second part regarding this uh, comment, it is very true that Microsoft Lens is a camera app wherein if you if you keep like, you know, like this, like this is the, I don't know whether we are able to see. No, I yes. have to change my, I have to change no, my. Sir, keep it again to your shirt. Sir, I no. don't your okay. neck level, yeah. Okay. Okay, or or I just uh, remove this background. Just a moment. None. Okay. So now here is something where I don't know whether you are able to see, but this particular app, which is a Microsoft Lens, this app has a built-in perspective square. So when you take something which is oblique, it automatically picks up that oblong. And when you click it, it, it takes a photograph with all your capacity of your camera, but in an absolutely right perspective. So that is an easy way. Secondly, I am using Pixel uh, Mobile. Pixel Mobile has got built-in perspective when you are cropping or turning it to right or left. At a time, you are able to do it. So that, that place only it is possible to uh, make it a proper perspective, which is very important. And secondly, regarding the background, which you do not want, take the help of portrait facility. In all this camera, you'll see one of the setting is called portrait. So that is very often it happens in my ward that you want to take some pictures from one bed and the rest of the beds are showing so much, you know, mess. And you don't want in a background, all this wall, which are not painted where all these things, you go with the portrait. So portrait will focus only the near subject and will automatically defocus the rest of them. So that becomes very easy. But I think rest of all the tools which are very important and it is easy to you know, use them. And one of the Chinese uh, app website, which is free website and also in an application available on uh, internet is very good for the perspective. It gives you multiple different options. And uh, uh, you can you can make the picture the way you want in that perspective. It's a good thing, right? Thank you. <laughs> One more question which I had is: once you uh, do all the editing in in the PowerPoint, and uh, does PowerPoint uh, reduce the the picture quality? And when you export out, is there any kind of loss of picture quality when, when that is done, Dhiran sir? Yes, like see, the first of all, like if your picture file is big, the PowerPoint will definitely insert the picture. And then uh, if you are going for a presentation, then definitely I would use a compress function. And in which, again, you have an option, whether you want to compress this one picture or all the picture of the presentation. Yes, if you use all pictures, uh, and then definitely that will reduce the quality of picture. But if you don't use that uh, function, then your file size will be bigger, but your picture will be of uh, better quality. And then the resolution again remains of a uh, good quality. 
So, so like I want to email the presentation. In that case, definitely I would like to compress the uh, file size. And for that, I use the compress uh, picture format of uh, options. And that would definitely reduce the quality of picture. But at the same time, it will reduce the file size also. Uh, continuing to the same, uh, suppose we receive images in three different modes, like we have shot a photograph on our mobile camera, or X-ray or a photograph, or we have received on a WhatsApp, or we have received on an email. So suppose uh, from the phone, if I want to transfer to WhatsApp, does the size reduces or from WhatsApp, if I want to store it, does the file size and the quality changes? similarly for the emails yeah that's that's a very important question and yes time and again i have seen that a lot of people have a tendency to send pictures by whatsapp whatsapp inherently use a compression feature and by that picture quality is reduced whether you want it or not automatically it reduces the picture quality so if you want a better quality picture then it's better to email it rather than send it by whatsapp so that is one thing which i have seen that a lot of people they have a tendency to send uh, whatsapp uh, particularly the pictures on WhatsApp, and that will definitely compress the picture automatically, whether you want it or not. So avoid it. If possible, use the email options. Uh, the, there, are, there are two tips. One is that instead of sending as an image, send it as a document. Mm -hmm. Document will not do anything. And your whole full size on social media, you'll be able to transfer. But the question is very important. When there is a presentation, and you want to save it as a slides. So each slide will become a photo. Now there you want how much resolution you want. Now for that, presently PowerPoint is not having an open method by which you can have a very high resolution slide photo. But if you want a high resolution, there are very easy steps where you change the uh, window INI file for the PowerPoint where you increase the resolution. Say for example, somebody is not able to transfer his WhatsApp video more than 16 MB. And if I want to send WhatsApp video 50 MB, there is a way you can change the setting by going into the developer's zone. It is absolutely highly technical, but it is possible. But one thing which uh, Sangeet has asked is that reverse way is not going to be high resolution. Once the photo has been gone as a social media to WhatsApp, now that is a low resolution, that low resolution will not come as a high resolution back because it has, it has lost its. Now for that, what I do, there are so many good screens, like whatever you see on the screen, you get much better quality depending on the quality of that display or screen or the resolution. So something which is not seen very well on uh, your laptop may be seen good on TV or some other laptop. There again, you take a screenshot and then you make it a, a good photograph. But yes, once the detail is lost, uh, you there is no way you can take it back. Yes. Right, sir. So this one and a half hours again is too too less uh, i think we should go on and on for a full day or probably we should have a society uh, which will have a conference of two days or one day where we discuss only this but unfortunately because of time and uh, other commitments we all have to conclude this and uh, i thank all of you i thank especially dr dhiren ganjawala who has spared so much of time and Dr. Jawar Jaitwa, sir, who has joined in spite of being so busy, and our webmaster, Shitij, who has helped us uh, and uh, given a good knowledge on how to take photographs. Uh, we will have one more uh, from you, sir, Jaitwa, sir, that will be a separate one, maybe in some time, whenever you have time. Uh, so thank you all. And uh, our webmaster was Agnivesh Tiku, who has helped us in uh, organizing this webinar. So thank you all. Uh, 
Shitish, anything? Anything else? No. That's it. Yeah. One for one last question. Somebody asked: Is it better to buy Microsoft Office if we buy a Mac? And the answer to it is that if you can buy Microsoft, if you have uh, Microsoft Office, if you have Mac, because the um, the Mac version of Microsoft works uh, on the Mac computers, and you get one uh, GB of uh, OneDrive space. Where, which you can use for storing photographs and all this information uh, on uh, on your computer. But the problem is with the Mac, iCloud works the best, and you'll have to do a lot of work around for using it with OneDrive. But uh, so to use it seamlessly, I would say that yes, it can work. But uh, I think most people buy Microsoft because everybody is used to using PowerPoint rather than Keynote. So I think it's worth the purchase. Wonderful. So uh, to conclude on behalf of the Bombay Orthopedic Society, I thank both the faculties, uh, Dr. Dharian Ganjwala for speaking so wonderfully about uh, editing photographs in the most simplistic manner. And Dr. Shitek Chaudhary for showing us and giving us a lot of uh, tips, especially practical ones about taking interoperative photographs. Uh, I wish you all a good night. Uh, stay safe. And let's hope that uh, we can meet in the future uh, on the web as well as in person. Thank you and good night. Yeah, thank you.